and share all my sorrows. You said you'd be there for all my tomorrows. I came so close to sending you away, but just like you promised, you came in to stay. I just had to pray. And Jesus said, Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Joel, and um, I welcome you all, and just grateful that you are here, grateful for this opportunity for us to be able to worship together, whether you're here in person or joining us online. Pray that you experience God's presence here in worship and in our community. Today, we mark two special celebrations today. First of all, it is baptism of our Lord. We celebrate the, the gift of baptism that we hear, we'll hear in the gospel, the story of Jesus being baptized, and we are invited to follow him through that life of baptism. And so we, we focus on that today, but this also introduces for us a, a season of worship for us. In this season, we're entering into a new worship series we're calling Walking Wet. And so for the next six weeks of our worship, we'll be focusing on God's promise of baptism and how we walk wet. That's, that means following Jesus through the life of baptism, how we respond to that call as a body of Christ knowing that we are freed and forgiven children of God. So I said we have two special celebrations. Our other celebration today is that it is Sky Ranch Sunday, and there was all kinds of commotion going on in between the services um, because we have Sky Ranch staff here. They were playing games with them. They were talking about the camp. They were uh, doing music and such. So we're blessed to be able to have Lori Bodie here. She is the executive director of, of Sky Ranch Lutheran Camp. And we'll get to hear a message from her in, uh, a little bit later in worship. So, Lori, thanks for being here with us. For, uh, 
I'll say too, Sky Ranch, we, we uh, participate here at Zion, we participate in the ministry of Sky Ranch in so many different ways. They come, uh, last summer we did the first time in, in quite a few years where we did day camp instead of our traditional vacation Bible school model, where some of the staff at Sky Ranch came and shared with our children and adults who were helping out. We also send kids multiple weeks through the summer up to the camp. And we invite people of all ages to come up with us on Labor Day weekend. We go camping, or if camping isn't your thing, you're invited to stay in a lodge or a cabin or whatever you might be. But we love Sky Ranch. It is an incredible place, incredible people filled by the Spirit. So that's why we celebrate this day today. For those of you who are here with us physically, you'll find a connection sheet in the bulletin. We would love for you to fill that out. And then later in worship, as the offering plates come around, you can drop those in there. If you're joining us online, I was just making, getting a sign there. If you're joining, oh, maybe. If you're joining us online, hopefully you will find in the chat feature in just a moment uh, a link to be able to fill out that same sheet. If not, be sure and call the office if you have questions about what's going on in the life and ministry of the church here at Zion and how you can participate. And if you're joining us online, we also invite you, uh, if you haven't already done so, we celebrate Holy Communion every time we gather for worship. So if you haven't done so already, I invite you to go and gather some bread or some crackers, some grape juice or wine or even water as, so that it, when we get to that time in worship, you can celebrate Christ's very real presence with us here in our worship, in our community, in our lives. Because it is baptism of our Lord Sunday, we're celebrating this gift of baptism in our lives. Often we gather, we start with confession and forgiveness. Instead, we begin this service with a thanksgiving for baptism. And in that, I invite you to hear God's promise to you that you belong to Christ, you are loved, and you are forgiven. So let us begin with that thanksgiving for baptism. I invite you as you're able to stand. We're gathered this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed in God's mercy and forgiveness. And so let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life, in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us. As daughters and sons, you make us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew us, our lives, with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. As we begin our worship singing together, baptized and set free, I'm going to be moving around the sanctuary sprinkling you with water. It's fun. It's also, it's a celebration for us to remember our baptism or the promise that God gives each person that you belong, you are loved, you are forgiven. So as I do, if you would like to receive that water, if you want to make the sign of the cross on yourself or whatever you do to remember this promise, please do as we sing together.
God, I give you thanks for this day, for us to be able to gather together in worship and with praise and thanksgiving, we offer our thanks to you, O God, who invited us through baptism into the baptism of Jesus, where you proclaimed him your beloved son. You anointed him with the Holy Spirit. So call us beloved children. Call us to walk wet through him, to follow him in lives of grace and love. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Invite the congregation to be seated, and I'd like to invite all the kids forward for Kids in Christ. We're going to have a science lesson today. I know you thought you didn't have to come to school, but... Hi, guys. Come on up. Yeah. You want to sit here with me? I brought some water with me just in case I get a little thirsty. Think I got enough? Yeah. I did. I do have enough. That's very cool. All right. I'm going to sit over here and watch you guys in since you're leaning that way. So today, <laughs> it's hide and seek today. We're going to hide behind pastor. I like that, you know? Pastors have strength. Sometimes that's a good thing to hide behind the pastor. So today, you're going to hear a lot about, in church today, you're going to hear a lot about water. All right? Water probably isn't something you thought a lot about, is it? No, but you know what? Water is life. There's a lot of things that are pretty cool about water. For instance, did you know that when babies were born, that they're 78% water? Did you know that 70% of the earth is covered by water? Yeah, and 97% of that is salt water. How lucky we are to have clean water. And did you know that you can go a month without food, but you can't even go a week without water? That's how important water is to us. As a matter of fact, water makes our, makes our weather. But you know what's really cool? Just in a little tiny drop of water, just in one little water drop in here, you know that there's things like eggs, baby crabs, and small worms that can live in that one drop of water. So, yeah, so think about that the next time you take a drink. And when you drink out of the faucet, I want you to think about this. And mom and dad, this is a cool fact you can use to impress people at parties too, is that... Water has been around since the earth is created, and that water still exists today. That means that you could be drinking with mo water with molecules in it that dinosaurs drank from. How cool is that? That is really cool. So what do you, what do you, guys, what do you guys use water for in your lives? What's that? Drinking. What else do you use water for? Planting, yeah, you will use it for plants. What else? Do we maybe wash? You guys take showers or baths? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Even I do sometimes. You do it sometimes too? That's really cool. And I bet we wash cars and we wash our clothes. But everything has water in it. It's the only, it's the only thing in life that affects everything. Water is life. And so it's not, it's not unusual that God would use water too. What do you think God would use water for? What did we just do this morning with Pastor Joel? Yeah. We sprinkle water from the baptismal font. That's right. It's very, water is so important that, um, that God created water and uses water to bring life to people. Did you know Jesus was baptized in a river? He didn't get to come up to a, a baptismal font. He was, he was baptized in a river, and they laid his whole body down in the river, head and everything. And when he came back up, he heard a voice from God that said, you are my son, and you are truly loved. And he saw doves come down from the heaven, all from his baptism, which is pretty cool. But we don't do that when we get baptized in church, do we? We don't have doves that come down, and we don't hear voices in our head. But what we do do is pretty cool. Your parents, or sometimes adults that weren't baptized as children, get to come down and get baptized in the water. So it's symbolic, just like Jesus did. And you know what happens to that water when we're baptized? 
that same water that contains eggs and worms and was drunk by dinosaurs. You know what happens to that water? It, it turns into the Holy Spirit when it comes inside us, when we're touched by it. And so when we're baptized by that water, that means that we receive the Holy Spirit and God tells us we are loved and we are beloved children of God. How about that? I think it's pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this pitcher of water right here, that water that we drank, and we're going to transform that into something that's going to be life-giving. And so we're going to come up with Pastor Joel, and we're going to sit around the baptismal font. Now we're over here. You want to come on around here? Come around the font. Oh, here, I'll See give that to you. Okay. All right. All right. Can you touch that water? Put your hand in there. Oh, yeah. There you go. Touch the water. Whoa, you went all the way in. <laughs> That's great. You went all the way. You don't have to. You can just put your finger in. You're going to take a bath there? All right. There you go. Ooh, is this easy to get into wash, you wash your hands, right? Can you put your hand in there? Oh, you're going all the way too, huh? All right. All right. Can I do this too? Go on. We're... Yeah. All right. Now I want wow. you to take that wet hand. I want you to mark a cross on your forehead. Can you do that? That reminds us that we are marked with the cross of Jesus and we're always kept in God's love. Okay, so when we pour this in there, did you hear that? When you wash your face, when you take a bath, when you drink water, when you do anything with water, you can remember, this helps us remember that God loves us, that we are marked with that cross and we're kept in God's love forever. Amen. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say a little prayer and then we're going to learn our new Bible, Bible verse. Okay, so you guys want to repeat after me. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for water. Thank you for water. Water that keeps us healthy. Water we use to grow food. And water that we can just enjoy. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us safe. And showing us your love through baptism. Showing us your love through baptism. Because we are all children of God. Because we are all children of God. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Now it's time to learn a brand new Bible verse. Yeah. I'm going to stay up here. I'm going to stand up here because I need some. This is my cheat note. This is the first time. So we like to learn. Um, Bible verses so that we can commit them to memory. And one of the things we do to help us commit to memory is that we do some sign language. We do some motions because they say that with motions, it helps us commit it to memory even better, okay? So I want you to repeat after me. This is a really hard thing to do because a lot of times people want to talk at the same time as me. So when I say Bible verses and I make some signs, then I want you to follow along, repeat after me, okay? Repeat after me. After me, thank you. Yeah, that's a camp thing. Repeat after me. After me. Okay. What does the Lord require but to do justice? This is a hard sign. This is, you don't have to repeat this after me, you know. But this is, if you can remember the, like, if you've ever been into a court or you've seen the scales of justice, we're making those scales of justice. So to do justice, to love kindness. Love kindness. Right, so we can remember love and then kindness is you take your middle finger and you draw a circle around your heart because kindness starts with the heart. And walk Humbly, I know, this is a hard one, right? This is humbly, if you can remember, we've got a barrier here, and humility always starts with our words. So remember this, humbly, and then we're going under the radar. Walk humbly with our God, with our God. Okay, let's try this one more time. Repeat after me. I'm not going to explain anything this time. I'm just going to do it. What does the Lord require but to do justice, love kindness, and walk 
humbly with our God. Awesome. This is a great Bible verse that helps us remember how we walk wet, how we live as a baptized child of God. We're going to be working on that through the next six weeks. And like I've said in the past, if you have that memorized, then you can show me that you have it memorized. Or Miss Rhonda, you'll get a special prize for that. Any of you can. All right. Hey, thanks for coming up. We'll see you next time. the 42nd chapter. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice he will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, and who gives breath to the people upon it and the spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, <coughs> those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and the new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Word of God, word of life. with the gospel, go ahead with the gospel. Yes, sorry, I, I see the prompt here is the reading from Matthew, which I will reference in a minute, but I'm here to share with you the holy gospel of the Lord according to Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and a lightning on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to thank you all and Pastor Joel for inviting us to be with you together in worship and to celebrate our partnership and ministry together. Um, I am joined today by the rest of our year-round staff 
who were gathered out in, um, in the fellowship hall there, playing games this morning and sharing um, some of the songs that are beloved at, at Sky Ranch with, with the kids and some of you adults who joined as well. Um, we're very grateful for your support, and without you, um, we, we couldn't continue to serve in the ministry together. Um, I have been, uh, my name is Lori Bodie, by the way, Executive Director of Sky Ranch, if you missed that when um, Pastor Joel started this morning. I've been with Sky Ranch now for about 10 months, I, so I, I'm still hanging on to, to that I'm, a, I'm still new, but I don't know how much longer I can continue to, to, uh, to fall back on that. But I definitely feel um, certainly settled in and a part of the family of Sky Ranch. Uh, I come from North Carolina, uh, where I was program director for seven years at a, one of the large Lutheran camps within um, the United States. It's called Camp Lutheridge. Um, for as long as I can remember, camp has been a part of my life and has certainly shaped my faith formation. And so it's, it's a passion that I have and I continue to share with others. I grew up as a camper at Camp Lutheridge and I had amazing counselors who were strong mentors for me and were able to share their faith story uh, and pass that along, which then I couldn't wait to grow up to be a counselor just like they were so that I could continue to do the cool things that they did and to be able to talk about the experiences that I had with camp and share that with the campers who came to me. It was there during that time and I served as a counselor for four summers there. Um, I met my husband and um, there are quite a handful of couples out there walking around who also met their spouses or future spouses. Um, that is true of our staff as well. As in the service earlier this, this morning, I was able to introduce Maddie, Jeff's wife, and his son, Cal, future camper and leader as a counselor. Um, and then after I served as a counselor, I then became a program director, director after I left the corporate world serving as a human resources director for many years. So I went away from outdoor ministry, but just couldn't help but come back to outdoor ministry. My husband, Bo, and I have two kids, Madison and Arden. Both are seniors. Um, one, Madison, our oldest, is a senior in college, and Arden, a senior in high school. And they, too, have been shaped um, and immersed in the community that um, comes from camp. And we are so grateful for that true gift um, that's helped to form their lives as, C, uh, as well. And so I just wanted to share with you that I know that many of you have also been touched by being a part of camp, probably at some point in your life, maybe. And if not, then we welcome you because you're never, it's never too late. You're never too mature to come and experience camp and Sky Ranch welcomes all. I'd love to see a hand of those of you who have been to Sky Ranch before. How many out there have been to Sky Ranch? Oh, good number of you, that's great. And for those of you who haven't been to Sky Ranch, or just, you can include yourself in this as well, have you grown up being campers before? Have you been a camper at any camp in your life? Yes, great. Would anyone like to share um, the impact camp made on your life? A brief, some, what is, how did camp touch your life um, in, in such a way that's touched mine. Please feel free to share. We had a couple earlier. Anyone? It's okay if not. Uh, I'll share with you that someone from the earlier service, she shared that when she went to camp, they studied five chapters in the book of James at camp. And to this day, she, she still remembers very well the story that comes from James because of her experiences at camp that could connect and relate to those. And so outdoor ministry is a wonderful way that we can reach the lives of others, who some who are not participating in church, um, and, you know, many come and experience camp and they can experience ministry in a, in a place without walls. And that's such a beautiful thing. And we're so grateful to be able to share that 
with you, with each other, and coming together in community, and just um, are very appreciative of the ways you continue to help support our ministry so that we can continue to share. This summer, or this year, actually, is the 60th year of Sky Ranch Lutheran Camp. So if you weren't aware of that, there's a lot of rich, strong history, and I'm so thankful to have been welcomed into this, uh, now a part of my family as well. And so it was very fitting when Pastor Joel reached out to us to come with you today that he shared with us the scriptures for today's lesson and uh, how camp is an awesome place to be able to witness and experience what it means for our baptism and the promises that God gives to us from that. Um, and before we talk, move forward with just the scripture from Isaiah and from our reading today, it's important to know about some of the history and where this comes from, because oftentimes we read scripture and we can place our own interpretations into it, but it's hard to truly know what is intended without knowing the history. During this time... God delivered people from bondage in Egypt and made a covenant with them and brought them through wilderness into the land of Canaan. They became a nation and built a temple for the Lord. For centuries, they saw military victories and defeats under kings and generals. They strayed from God's covenant, but prophets called them back. Then in the sixth century of BCE, the unthinkable happened. The Babylonians defeated Israel. They destroyed the temple. And this was utter, complete devastation of the political, social, economic, and religious life that God's people had known for centuries. So for those of us in America, um, it's hard to really imagine and understand what that must have been like if we haven't experienced combat and defeat on our own soil. It may be difficult to imagine just how devastating it was for God's chosen people to be handed over to enemies. They were humiliated and destroyed and taken into bondage, all while God did not intervene to stay. And so this could present many questions. It did present many questions for the people of that, that time it, it presents questions for us today. And as we welcome campers to camp at Sky Ranch, that is a beauty for all of us to be able to share this story and all of the stories that come from scripture with our campers to help them understand truly what it means. Because sometimes when we read scriptures, there can be a lot of questions in that, but not just the scripture. We still today endure so much in our world. There is so much brokenness out there. And there's battles that are still being fought for people trying to claim what is right and just in their, in their land, in their world. But also our kids in school struggling with some of the things that they face and wondering about why, the why and the questions. And so one would think that during this time they would ask questions how could the mighty deliverer allow this to happen? How could God abandon them? Removed from access to the temple and to the land where they still are God's people? Was God still God? In exile, they could only conclude that God had withdrawn favor and allowed the Babylonians to punish them for their sins and disobedience. Into this identity crisis, Isaiah speaks a word. This prophet reminds the people who God is and how God works. He draws their attention from this particular historical moment to the larger purposes of God by reminding Israel of who God is, how God works, and what God is doing by sending a servant. Isaiah expands this frame of reference Relocating and purposing Israel's particularity within God's cosmic frame. I say that because when you come to camp, it's, it's amazing to see how vast God's creation is. And that's so important for our campers and guests to experience that out in God's creation. Because it is God who created this vast cosmic state, space that we all share 
And it's important to remember that that's an important part of what baptism means to us, that we are named and claimed God's children of God. Of, of God. And by being in a place like Sky Ranch or being at other camps and outdoor ministry, being able to be out in God's creation and see the beautiful mountains that are so majestic and so big and vast, it, it causes us to pause and wonder that God must love us so much to name and claim us because if God created all of this and all those creatures that we might see when we're up there at camp, the moose and the coyotes and bear and all kinds of, all kinds of animals, that some of those were a first for me when I, I ventured over here into Colorado. It's important to know that we are created wonderfully in God's image. God is the God not of Israel only or even of Babylon, but the one who created the heavens and stretched out the earth, as we hear in verse 5 from Isaiah's reading today. This is the God of creation who made everything that is and who dwells in this wide open cosmic space, not contained by the cramped space of exile. This is the God who gives breath to the people upon the earth and spirit to those who walk on it. I'm gonna say that again. That's from our reading today as well. This is the God who gives breath to the people upon the earth and spirit to those who walk on it. God's breath animates not only the people of Israel, but every living, breathing creature on the planet. And finally, this is also the God who has reached out to create the particular people called Israel to call them to righteousness and to keep them. This is the God of the expansive universe and the God of these very particular people. Isaiah proclaims this God acts in particular ways. First, God sends a spirit-filled servant, not a conqueror or a tyrant. As we hear in our reading today, a bruised reed he will not break. This agent of God is a liberator who will bring justice, not domination. Second, God works to bring justice in the earth, that is, to bring it to all everywhere. God sends this servant to persevere until justice is done all the way to the coastlands. And third, God pur purposes God's people to be a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison who, those who sit in darkness. God brings light to the nations. Isaiah reminds this exiled people that God has not abandoned them, but is indeed at work among them, restoring them to be a blessing. This is such good news. God is still God. God's people are still God's people in their particularity, yet with a purpose that extends beyond themselves to all the earth. Notice that the reassurance that Isaiah offers is not triumphalistic. I was told earlier that that is a word, that I, that I did not make that word up. I thought it felt that way. Um, but it's that reassurance that, I, that what Isaiah is offering is not one where there is talk of revenge or of the turning of the tables in, for the, on the Babylonians. It's not this let's go get kick some booty and take names concept. It's rather just a way to walk in love with each other and in justice, to stand up for those because we are all children of God. We are named and claimed by our baptism to know that we deserve to live on this earth weirdly and wonderfully made because we are all who we are meant to be just as we are. Isaiah shifts Israel's gaze here from themselves back to the wide casting of God's promise and plan. The horizon of possibility is no longer the hand in front of my face, but the very edge of the earth's curvature a roomy expanse for God to declare new things that spring forth 
as we hear in verse 9. This is a vision that is full of future. And what a bright future there is to be had. We love to see the kids that come to us each summer with the wonder and the questions, the why, and the who is God, where is God? We hear about this, but sometimes it doesn't make sense. But when we can gather together in community to play and fun, to sing songs that are so fun, it fills our heart and gives us joy so that we can go forth and share that with others. So that we can tell our friends that there is this cool place that we could gather, not just inside a building with walls, but outside in God's beautiful, glorious creation. But yet, it's also important that our campers who come, and sometimes it's the first time they have church. We have so many people that come to us that have never been inside a church before, yet they are filled with the Holy Spirit and this good news, and they wanna know how it is that they can continue this feeling when they leave camp. So we're able to share with them that we have communities such as Zion where they can go back in their hometown and find a place where they can be filled with this good news too. So that's why it's so important that we share in this partnership and ministry together. Today we celebrate Jesus's baptism. Jesus has come into the world as a light that darkness cannot overcome as we hear in the book of John. A light to the nations as we heard today in our message. In our second reading, or the Gospel of uh, Matthew, we mark the baptism of Jesus, which is echoed in Isaiah. The Spirit of God des descended upon him. The Spirit of God descended upon him, as we heard that in all of those molecules of water, we are filled with that Spirit each and every time that we are reminded of our baptism. And a voice from heaven announces, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. What a gift. What a gift to know that God loves us so much to give his son to share this good news and to be baptized himself so that it can bring light and shed um, so much grace and love on all of us so that we can share in that too when we are baptized or we experience our baptism. When we come to camp, whether it's at Sky Ranch or our friends at Rainbow Trail or any of the other camps that are out there, it's important to remember that we can gather together in such a beautiful setting and the, with the expanse of mountains and trees and animals. And also our campers, when they go on day hikes, um, they are walking alongside the rivers that flow and you, there's always that constant reminder. And our counselors are truly gifted in being able to share that with campers and make reference to the campers and what it means to be good stewards of God's creation because we too are created weirdly and wonderfully um, by God and that we're all children of God. It's important for us because it's how we are called to be servants and live as Jesus lived in a life of justice and of loving one another. And what we teach about that is that the simple part of what it means to live a life of justice, it doesn't mean we have to get caught up in a lot of the things that divide us throughout this world with that word justice. It simply means, as Jesus is for justice, we are too because we are to look out for our neighbors, our brothers, our sisters, our siblings in Christ, that we are to stand up for those who we may not know or we may be different from, but because they are a child of God too, it is important that we make them feel welcome and important. This pattern of servanthood continues from Isaiah to Matthew. In Jesus, God again sends a servant who will bring justice, who God anoints to bring good news to the poor, to those who are marginalized, and proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and declare the year of the Lord's favor, as we hear in the book of Luke. During Epiphany, we recognize and receive Jesus 
and this Jesus who is a servant of God for the whole world. And at Sky Ranch, we too receive Jesus. And as Jesus calls us to live into the promise of our baptism, we receive and welcome all to Christ's table. And we hope that as we send our campers and our guests down the mountain, that that just doesn't end there. That when you come to Sky Ranch and you can just sit and wonder in the creation and beauty, and you feel the wind, and you feel the love that surrounds you by the community that you're immersed in, that you can too go down the mountain and share this with those that haven't had the opportunity or the privilege to be at a place like that, that's so sacred and so safe, the space that is safe where everyone could feel welcome. So as we go down the mountain, walking wet, as you will continue to hear, throughout your time over the coming weeks. Um, it's important that we send those down the mountain and that we all go out from here today knowing what it means to be walking wet, remembering the water that was sprinkled on us by Pastor Joel today. And if you will help me close this out, um, I am grateful for Pastor Joel and teaching us this this verse um, from Micah today, as we are reminded to walk humbly with our God. So let's walk humbly with our God. Thank you so much for having us here. We'll certainly uh, stick around after the service. For any of you who have questions and would love to just share your story, I had several who, who weren't sharing their impacts earlier, but who came up to us afterwards to share the impact that camp has made on their lives. We'd love to greet you as well. Thank you so much for having us here. Amen. Thank you, Lori, for bringing God's word to us and sharing with us. Um, later in the offering, I'll, I'll just note there are some envelopes, special offering envelopes in your bulletin. Those are for camperships. Those are so that we can help provide camping opportunity to more kids, especially those who may not be able to afford it. So if you would like to contribute in that way, we'll be taking those offerings for the next couple of weeks. Um, we ask you to prayerfully consider that so that we can do that and send more kids to camp. During this time in worship, we enter into a time here at Zion we call sacred space. All of worship is sacred space, but this is an opportunity for us to, to respond to everything that we've heard in God's word, from God's word in different ways. One of the ways is, well, we're going to be singing Wade in the Water. And so as we sing Wade in the Water, I'm also going to take, I have some ribbons here from the font I'm going to spread them all throughout the congregation, throughout the sanctuary, and you have in your pews some scissors. So this is something you can't do alone, I don't think. Um, take some of these ribbons and help each other. Cut a, a length that you can tie around your, your wrist. This is a reminder of baptism and the promise that God makes to each of us. So you can, you can wear that throughout the week or however long you would like to, to, to have this remembrance. Last time we did something like this, it was pretty cool. I was in the hospital and somebody actually asked me, what's, what's that ribbon around your wrist for? So it gave me an opportunity to talk about, talk about God and about God's love and about baptism. So we'll be doing that as we sing together, wade in the water. Also throughout this season, Throughout this theme that we're going to have this table set over up over here that says walking wet and there's some footprints on it. If you have any prayers that you would like to have lifted up in our worship, I'll be praying them out loud in a moment. Whether they are concerns or celebrations, um, I invite you to come and write them on those footprints and leave them in the basket. And then later after we pray them, we'll see them um, take shape, show up on that bulletin board over there. So we enter now into this time of sacred space and I'll uh, help bring ribbons all around to the sanctuary.
gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Let Moses laugh. God's are gonna trouble the water. I said. This season, our prayers, uh, the prayers of the people will be sung. This is actually a uh, way of praying that we received from Outdoor Ministries. This was developed by somebody at Rainbow Trail. I don't know if you guys, some of you know that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's a beautiful format of prayers. It follows the same way that uh, any other time when we have spoken the prayers of the people or prayers of intercession, it follows that same pattern. But... Um, I invite you not just to hear the music, but really listen to the words as I pray and add your, in your own thoughts and in your own hearts, add your own prayers of what you know is going on in the world, going on in your lives, um, whether they, again, be prayers of celebration or prayers of need and concern. Also, I want to note many of you have known Mary Jo Hack. She has been a member here at, at Zion for at least 62 years, I looked up. And if you haven't heard, I don't want you to be surprised in the prayers that Mary Jo died this last Thursday. And she has touched many of your lives, people old and young. And so, uh, so we pray for all of her family in this time of mourning and for this congregation. Now we lift up our prayers. Frantic pace for the 
the places that we find deeper space. God, we lift up these prayers to you, those that have been given here in our worship. We pray prayers of comfort and love for my mother as she copes with the passing of grandmother. For students who are mourning the death of their friend Eli. God, help us all know the most true thing about us all is that we are beloved children of God. God, we give you thanks for the ministry of Sky Ranch, for the beauty of that place and your creation, for the way your spirit lives and breathes among the staff there at Sky Ranch. We give you thanks for that ministry that you share with us. And we lift up to you these concerns that are printed in our bulletin as we pray for Brenda, Preston, Ann, Connie, Marthan, Marilyn, Lynn, Elaine, Becky, Cliff, Steve. Also for Kevin Patrick, who's recovering after surgery, and Stan, Linda Tegeter's brother-in-law, for Lillian and John suffering from COVID and their grandson, Matthew, who is returning for his final semester of college tomorrow. And we lift up those who are struggling with and living with cancer. Gary, Marcia, Carolyn, Carolyn, Mary Jean, Linda, Marjorie, Vicki, Christine. And for the family and friends of those who have died recently, we lift up to you the family and friends of Craig Wilson's mom, Elois, and for Mary Jo Hack, for her family and friends. Give them all confidence in your promise of resurrection. God, we lift up all of these prayers to you. On this day, we give you thanks, especially for the gift of baptism, for the baptism of your son, Jesus, and your call for us to follow, to walk in his footsteps of love and justice and grace. This week, we especially give you thanks for the baptism of those who celebrate their baptismal birthdays this week. Amy Bronner, Nita Starr, Carol Ward, Susan Linden, 
Flynn Wackles and Nash Wackles, Howard Abraham, Olivia Tate, Rick Bilstad, and Steve Bernhardt. God, we lift up these prayers to you. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with one another and with those who are joining us online. We share Christ's peace with you through the camera. Peace of Christ be with you. Here I am, Lord's on 114. Want to do something like that? Is that too uh, campy? Together, let us pray that these gifts would be used for God's mission. Extravagant God, you break the bonds of injustice and free the oppressed. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people who do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. You we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Amen. Here at this table and this meal, we receive this promise that we are nourished, we are nurtured as children of God and sent out into the world to bring God's promise of love and belonging and forgiveness for all people. We hear that promise that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so gathered as one body, we pray as our Lord taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Come to our Lord's table. First, we commune those who have joined us online, or if you are here in the sanctuary and are either unable to come forward for communion or prefer to receive this gift in your seat. We have these little kits, and if you're in that group and didn't grab one of these on your way in, just raise your hand and we'll make sure and get one for you. All right. So if you are here and using these kits, I invite you to, you can peel back that layer with a little piece of bread in it. If you're at home, take your bread or cracker and hear this word of promise for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Now you can take your wine or grape juice or water and hear this promise that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Now I invite the rest of you forward at the direction of the ushers. Uh, you will receive a piece of bread. And um, if you prefer gluten-free bread, just let the server know that. We do have gluten-free wafers available. Then following the bread, we'll have some silver trays. And in those silver trays, wine is red-colored, grape juice is yellow-colored. Again, if you prefer to drink from the common cup, we do have that available as well. You can just let the server know that. Come forward, for now all is made ready.
Now may this gift of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Again, welcome to Zion. Um, pray that you have experienced Christ's presence here in our worship and in our community. Uh, thank you again, Lori, and for all the Sky Ranch staff for being here with us this morning. As we go out from worship, please do greet them and find out a little bit more about Sky Ranch. If you're not all already aware, they have a board back there that shows some pictures, and that's uh, a beautiful place and great people. So... Thank you again for being here. A, a number of things, the inside pages of your bulletin have all kinds of announcements. There's a lot going on here in the life of this church and the broader community. I'm gonna highlight a few of those things. First of all, we have a number of meetings coming up for your attention. The first one listed on there has already happened, the budget presentation. But if you have questions, um, the budget of this congregation really says a lot about our mission and who we are. And so if you have any questions, we'd love to talk to you after worship um, a little bit about that. Then next Sunday, we are going to be having uh, Pastor Veronica and her partner Greg. They'll be with us after each service. It's an opportunity for you to get to know her. If you're not aware, the call committee has been in process for about a year, uh, searching for another pastor to join me in ministry, to join us all as we partner in the gospel. And so next week, you get to meet her. And then the following week at the annual meeting, we will hear and share all about our mission here at Zion, our mission to share God's abundance together, to transform lives through the love of Jesus. And so I invite you to come and hear how we've done that in this last year and the exciting ways we think that God is pulling us into this year to share in that abundance. We will be voting on our budget and we will be voting on Pastor Veronica as a candidate. And so I invite you to come, come for that. If you are joining us online for that annual meeting, we really don't have any way to, to have to do the voting online and the voting in person. Some of you might remember when we had to only be online, we could do it, the voting that way. But, um, but please understand and know that if you do want to vote, we need you to be here present with us. A couple of other things, the high school, high schoolers, students, youth, are, and their friends are invited to join us. We'll be joining with youth from uh, King of Glory and Trinity Lutheran Churches tonight for dinner and a movie. Since this is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, we're going to be sharing a movie and talking about the civil rights movement and, and how we respond even today still. And so... If you're able to join us tonight at 5 o'clock, please do. Then tomorrow, there is a community celebration of Martin Luther King Jr. And it's going to be over at, Mar at Mountain View High School, just east of us here. Um, earlier, I was saying youth, but really anyone. This is such, it's a great event. It's something important for us to be able to celebrate and, and commemorate this day. So... I'll be meeting out in front of Mountain View High School. If anybody wants to meet me, please do. I'd love to be able to join you and sit with you. If you're looking for me out front and you can't find me, my phone number is in the bulletin there, so please text me or call me so we can connect. And I'm gonna buy ice cream or frozen yogurt or whatever treat the group decides after, after we join together in that celebration. 
We're putting together college care packages that we're sending to young adults who are away from home. And so uh, there's a table just outside that show that. Now, we, we realized that some of our young adults may not have gotten those kits that we sent last semester. And so if you know of some who did not get them, please make sure and let us know. Um, it's been hard. It's sometimes hard to track them all. So, uh, and we, this is from the congregation. So if we're starting with boxes that we've kind of put together some things, but if you would like to share something in those boxes, bring something along. We just ask that you have whatever you bring, that you have 17 of them so that they can be shared with all of our young adults. The children's choir, the next children's choir series is going to start two Wednesdays from now on January 25th. And children of all ages are invited to join with Noel in preparing music for Easter Sunday. Noel's over here in the band area. You can talk to her if you have questions about it. It's not only about children, though. If there are youth, middle school or high school youth or adults who want to be able to help Noel to teach and mentor these younger children please do talk to her so that you can figure out how you can help. And then finally, one final note, Lyft is, is going to be gathering January 24th. That's still a week and a half from now, but we do want to make sure that we know we have enough uh, seats reserved. They're going to be joining for lunch over at Golden Corral. So if you are interested in joining them, please make sure and let us know so that we have enough seats reserved. Lyft is ladies in fellowship together, so all women are invited to join with them for that. There's a lot of other things going on. Take a look at those announcements in the bulletin for whatever may apply to you, but know that all are welcome to join in any of these uh, gatherings and events that we have here at Zion. It has been a blessing to be able to worship with you today. So I invite you as you're able to stand and be sent out with a blessing as we are sent out as children of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <clears throat> Amen. Thanks be to God. God.